everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Puck. Today, we are tier ranking Juliet Marillier's books. Uh, so this is the second in a series of like four Juliet Marillier themed videos that I have planned for this year. I've already done the first one, which was an author guide. So a quick overview of all of her series and where I think you should start with her books if you wanna get into them. So if you're interested in that, I'll link it in the description. This one is my personal ranking of all of her books. Uh, I am going to be doing it as ranking individual books uh, just because while some of the th series will definitely cluster together because there are some series that are my favorites, uh, there are some series where things are going to be split apart and there are some real highs and lows within a single series. Um, so let's get into looking at the tiers that I have here. I have my laptop off to one side, so I am going to be looking off to the side and looking down while I do this. I have six tiers. You'll see that a lot of them kind of skew pretty positively, um, and that is because Juliet Marillier is one of my all-time favorite authors, and I really love her books. Uh, so if I didn't have, like, multiple positive layers, they would kind of all just end up in one category of, like, I love them. Uh, so I decided to really pull apart the different layers of how positively do I feel about these books. So we have, at the very top, how does this give me everything I could ever want? These are the books that I'm like, this is just like perfectly made for me. It has everything I could want in a book. Like this is the top tier, like ultimate book. Uh, then we have will reread until the end of time. These are also favorites, but like just slightly below the ones that I'm like, I love these and will reread them over and over and over and over. Uh, and we'll always talk about them, but they're just like slightly below that ultimate tier. Then we have Still Head and Shoulders Above the Rest. These are the books that I'm like, if we're comparing these books to other Marillier books, to like my favorites of Marillier, they are not in those top two tiers. They are not like the favorite of the favorites. But if I am comparing these books to like most of the other stuff that I read, head and shoulders above, like way ahead doing better. Uh, so it's kind of like, what's the standard? Because if the standard is Marillier, they're not at the top. But if the standard is other stuff, so good. Uh, then we have good, it did what it needed to do. This is my more neutral one, where I'm like, it's not bad. But it's like not a favorite. It like it did what it was doing and that like good for it. Then we have slow and that's saying something because honestly all of Juliet Marillier's books are slow and I love slow books. So if I am complaining about a book being slow, that means there is a problem. <laughs> that either it is like painfully slow or it is like boring or I couldn't connect with the characters or something else that is making it feel like a slog instead of feeling like I'm savoring the book. And then our bottom tier, which honestly was created for one specific book, uh, which we'll get there, is we're just going to pretend this one doesn't exist, but I forgive her. <laughs> uh, so that tier is like truly just for one book and we'll, we'll get there eventually. So let's get started. Okay, so first up, we have The Harp of Kings, which is the first book in the Warrior Bards trilogy. And this one, I am going to put in head and shoulders above the rest. It is not one of my personal like top tier favorites, but it's still really good, you know? And it is it is definitely in that category of like, if I'm comparing it to other Marillier books, there are things I love more, but it's still a really good book. I really enjoyed it as an introduction to the series. It has good vibes, like solid. Uh, then we have Wildwood Dancing. And Wildwood Dancing, I actually am already conflicted as to like, where should I put this? Because I really enjoyed Wildwood Dancing. I think it's a really fun book, but I think it's a really fun one to read once. Um, there are some books that stand up really well to reread that I either are just as good on reread or they get better on reread. And most of Juliet Marillier's books are like that. Most of her books are incredible to reread. Wildwood Dancing is the exception. 
I liked reading it the first time. It did not do as well on a reread. Uh, so I guess I'll put it in good. It did what it needed to do because like it did. It did what it needed to do the first time around and then like it didn't do more than that when I reread it. Okay, after that we have uh, Dreamer's Pool, which is the first Blackthorn and Grimm trilogy book. <sighs> and I do love the Blackthorn and Grimm trilogy and I'm trying to decide like which level does this go on. I think that this one is going to go on Will Reread Until the End of Time because I love this series. It is not necessarily like top top tier favorite, but it is so good like and it is one that I have reread and will continue to reread and I just love the characters in this so I feel like that feels good uh okay now we are on to Wolfskin uh so this is the first book in the Light Isle saga and the Light Isle saga may I'm trying to decide I don't know which is my least favorite series. As a full series, Light Isle Saga may be my least favorite of Marillier's books um, because it's so frustrating. <laughs> because in both of them, in the first book, we're following a character who is like a golden retriever human, but is friends with this person who's like a terrible human being and it's so obvious but our main character is so dedicated to being loyal to his friend that he just lets all of these terrible things happen and like the point of the story is that like he learns and grows and he figures out like that you have you can't just be blindly loyal to people and like you have to be able to see the negative aspects of people even people you love and like all of these things and I'm like great character arc. It was incredibly frustrating to read uh, and he just was annoying. Um, anyway, this is gonna go in the slow and that's saying something because this is one of those books that felt incredibly slow. It felt like I, it felt like a slog to me just because I was not enjoying the story or the characters. I was getting so frustrated with them and it just felt like it was moving so slowly. All right, then we have Well of Shades uh, and this is the third book in the Breedy Chronicles, which I do love the Breedy Chronicles. I reread them last year and like, they were so good. The first time I read them when I was like in high school, they made like no impression on me. And then I reread them last year and I was like, these are fabulous. Like, I don't know if everyone would like them because they definitely have their flaws, but I loved it. Anyways, this is the third book. And I am gonna put this one in Still Head and Shoulders Above the Rest because... Or should I put Will Reread Until the End of Time? I feel like it goes between those two levels and I don't know which one I should do. This is hard. Okay, how do I feel about this? All right, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna leave it in head and shoulders above the rest for right now. That, that feels right for the moment. Then we have Ravenflight. So this is the second book in the Shadowfell trilogy. And honestly, of the trilogy, I think this was my favorite one. So I think, oh, does it go in still head and shoulders above the rest or does it go in good, it did what it needed to do? Because the Shadowfell trilogy is not a favorite series of mine. Like, it's fine. For a while, I thought that it was my least favorite Marillier book, but then I recently reread it and I was like, you know what? This is more okay than I thought it was. <laughs> um, but now I'm very conflicted. I think that I'm going to put this in good. It did what it needed to do because that seems right at the moment. I'm gonna, I might have to come back to these at the end and kind of make sure everything still feels right. But for the moment, that's where I'm putting it. Then we have Son of the Shadows which is the second book in the Seven Waters tr series, uh, which this is gonna go into how does this give me everything I could ever want? Because I love it. This like the Seven Waters series, but especially the original trilogy 
like that's how I got into reading Marillier's books and they just like one I genuinely think they are the best but they also are just like in my feelings the best because I have read them so many times and for so many years uh, that they just like live in my heart forever. We have Heart's Blood, which is one of her few standalones. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And I'm gonna say that this one goes in still head and shoulders above the rest because this isn't necessarily one that I am like, oh, I'm gonna reread this forever and ever. It's the most incredible thing. But I did really enjoy it. I reread it recently and I reread it at a time when I had been trying to read, a, I had read a, I had tried to read a couple of different Beauty and the Beast retellings and I had just hated them. <laughs> I either just didn't like them or I DNF'd them. Um, and then I read Heart's Blood and I was like, this is a good Beauty and the Beast retelling. Like this one I actually enjoyed. And one of the reasons for that is I think because Juliet Marillier really, intentionally gives um, the main character her like agency and her ability to make choices. She has freedom to make her choices. So it feels less stockholm -y, you know, which is a problem sometimes. Uh, so while it's not like an all time favorite, as far as Beauty and the Beast retellings go, this is one of my favorites. Uh, so it goes in still head and shoulders above the rest. All right, now we're on to A Dance with Fate, which is book three of the Warrior Bards trilogy. Where did I put the first one? I put the first one on Still Head and Shoulders Above the Rest. I think I'm gonna put this one in good. It did what it needed to do because this I think was my least favorite of the trilogy. It was a book that like when I first read it, I was like, this was a great conclusion. And then as I got further and further away from it, I'm like, eh, I wish it had done some other stuff, you know? I wish there had been a little bit more to it. There's some questions I still had about it. So it was like good, but not as good as some other things. Okay, then we have Air to Seven Waters. I think Air to Seven Waters, oh, I'm very conflicted about this one actually. So this is part of the Seven Waters series. This is part of the second trilogy. <sighs> And this one, I don't know if I want to put it in will reread until the end of time. I feel like it has to go there. It's not my favorite in the Seven Water series, so I was a little bit tempted to put Still Head and Shoulders Above the Rest, but honestly, it's Seven Water series. I feel like it has to go in, whoa, I'm really like not controlling this well. Okay, I feel like it has to go in will reread until the end of time. It just has to. Uh, okay, then we have Blade of Fortriu, which is the second book in the Breedy Chronicles. Uh, and this one, where did I put the last one? I put the still head and shoulders above the rest. I feel like this one goes between these two. I want it, I want another level. This is like, even with all of the different levels I've made, I still want one in between. <laughs> Cause I feel like it's better than good. It did what it needed to do but I liked it less than Well of Shades, so I feel like it shouldn't go in the same tier as that one, because I think this this one was maybe my least favorite of the trilogy. So I'm very conflicted. We'll, we'll come back to that one. Okay, then we have The Caller, which is the third book in the Shadowfell trilogy, and this one can also go in good it did what it needed to do it can go in that category too that one's fine uh and then den of wolves is the third book in the blackthorn and grim trilogy where does this one go i think that i feel like this is gonna also go in will reread until the end of time honestly that whole trilogy might just go there because i love it um i'm trying to think of the trilogy, what was, I think that third book, Den of Wolves, might have been my favorite in, um, in the trilogy. So maybe it's like slightly above the other ones, but it's, it's still within the same tier. Uh, then we have Fox Mask, which is the second book in the Light Isle saga. Uh, and we're just gonna put this in the same category. This is one of those ones that clusters together. They're both in the slow and that's saying something for honestly the same reasons, because we have the whole storyline of Wolfskin and then Fox Mask is following the children of some of the characters from Wolfskin. And 
the the main character has to learn the exact same lesson and like it makes sense in that you know she's her father's daughter and you know she has a similar personality to him and so she has to learn the same lessons but reading this as a story oh my god it, i was like i was already like frustrated with this one time around i didn't need this the second time around uh okay then we're on to daughter of the forest which is the first book in the seven water series and i feel like we all know that this is gonna go in how does this give me everything i could ever want because it just it like is daughter of the forest it is the first book in my favorite series and again just i've reread this series so many times and i love it so much then we have sybil's secret which is the second book to wildwood dancing and this is the book that this bottom tier was specifically created for <laughs> because i think this is my least favorite of all of her books every other book in this whole thing like i have reread in the last couple years like relatively recently uh so that i could you know have a more have it refreshed in my mind because some of them i hadn't read since high school this is the one book that i didn't reread because i just was like i just disliked it so much the first time i read it that i didn't bother maybe i should have reread it because my opinions did change on some of the other books but i just really didn't want to i really like I enjoyed F Wildwood Dancing like that was a good book that one's fun and it's one that I think is a good place to start with her books but I really think that you should read Wildwood Dancing as a standalone so it goes in we're just gonna pretend that one doesn't exist read Wildwood Dancing uh, as a standalone then we get to go on to Song of Flight which is the second book in the Warrior Bards trilogy no wait Am I doing these in the wrong order? I just realized I mixed up these books. Hold on a second. I think that I thought, I think I mixed up A Dance with Fate and A Song of Flight. A Dance with Fate is book two. I think that I said it was book three. A Song of Flight is book three. Okay, now I have to backtrack. A Song of Flight, book three of the Warrior Bar, or yeah, of the Warrior Bards trilogy, this one is supposed to go in good it did what it needed to do because the third book was my least favorite in the trilogy a dance with fate is the second book in the trilogy and was my favorite of the trilogy so this changes everything for this book okay so now where do i put this i'm gonna put this one in will reread until the end of time because truly my favorite book in the trilogy it was great uh it had I don't know like the characters the slow burn the like just everything it was so good i loved that book okay i can't believe that i mixed those two up then we have uh flame of seven waters which is i think the sixth book in the seven waters trilogy now i'm like questioning myself as to what do i even know any of these books oh my god uh, Flame of Seven Waters. This is one of my less favorite ones and so I'm like kind of conflicted as to where it should go but still again it's part of Seven Waters so I feel like it has to go and will we read until the end of time just because like on principle. All right and then we have Shadowfell which is the first book in the Shadowfell trilogy. This one where am I gonna put this? Where did I put the other ones? Okay, I put the other ones in good, it did what it needed to do. I'm gonna put this one in slow and that's saying something because this was my least favorite in the trilogy and it was kind of slow. And it just involved a lot of traveling, which I don't like. Some people like traveling, I really don't. And so I was kind of like, all right. But she does meet a lot of really cute, like fair folk along the way and I really love their characters. So it wasn't bad, I don't know. I feel like this one kind of goes between like I want to put it like here between these two levels but like that's not that's not how this works I don't know I'm gonna come back to that one all right then dark mirror this one 
is gonna go somewhere in the top because I love this book. I loved my reread of the Breedy Chronicles but the first book was really my favorite of the trilogy. Where did I put the other ones? For some reason it really matters to me like in relation to the other ones I need to place these and I think that I'm so conflicted whether I should put this in will reread till the end of time or do I put this in how does this give me everything I could ever want? I'm so conflicted. I'm gonna okay I'm gonna put this up here for now just because I loved it so much on reread and it was such a surprise uh then we have beautiful which is a standalone and this one I think will go with in good it did what it needed to do I don't have strong feelings about this one but it was fine then we have child of the prophecy third book in the Seven Waters trilogy. I love this one. I feel like a lot of people don't really like this one for some reason. And honestly, it was my least favorite of that trill of the original trilogy for a while. But that but like then I reread it and I was like this is amazing. It's great. It belongs in the top tier. Like that original trilogy. <sighs> I just love it so much. I don't know. I like I don't have good re some of these I have like reasons for why I put them on their tiers and these ones I'm just like I love them. They go here. That's the reason. <laughs> uh, all right we're getting close to the end. So now we have Tower of Thorns which is the second book in the Blackthorn and Grimm trilogy and I think that this one also will go on will reread until the end of time because I love it. And then our last one is Seer of Seven Waters. And this is the fifth book, I think, in the Seven Waters series. Uh, but of the, like, second trilogy, this is my favorite one. Which, again, I feel like this is an unpopular opinion. I feel like people don't like this one because it does have a very different setting and feeling from a lot of the other books because it is set on an island. So it doesn't really have the forest vibes. It has like cold rocky island vibes. <laughs> but I loved it. This was one of my favorites in the series. But to me, like this is on the same tier level as the original trilogy. But I think that, that may be an unpopular opinion. Okay. Now I need to look at this and decide is everything staying where it is? Some of these ones between the levels I think I need to like choose a tier. So like I gotta think about this for a second. Okay I think I'm going to move a couple of these around. For one thing I feel like I'm actually gonna move Dark Mirror down to we'll reread until the end of time. I don't know if it quite if it quite reaches how does this give me everything I could ever want, it just like, I loved it but it wasn't like quite there. Uh, then for these ones that are sort of in the middle, I think I'm gonna move Blade of Fortreau up to be in still head and shoulders above the rest. Because even though I liked it less than Well of Shades, I feel like it could still be in the same tier. And then I think I'm going to move Shadowfell, probably. Because I think that this one maybe should just go on slow and that's saying something. I I think that that seems right. Okay, now, now I got to take a look at this again and be like, does this look right to me? All right, I'm just going to move some of these so that they're like lined up nicer. All right, so that is my personal ranking of all of Juliet Marillier's books. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I would love to know like how you feel about the ranking, like what would your ranking be or is there anything that you would change? Like how similar or different is your ranking from my ranking? Uh, I would love to know your opinions. Uh, is there anything you strongly disagree with? But thank you all for watching and until next time, bye!